Hey everyone, I hope you're all doing well and you all had a wonderful weekend. So the hubby and I snuck away for a couple of days of quiet camping to, um, it's a very, very tiny private estate that you're allowed to camp on near where we live. Absolutely beautiful. There is not a lot there. There is um, one compost toilet, which I have affectionately called the toilet of doom. <laughs> Um, but it was just lovely to be submerged in nature. We're both massive outdoorsy people, so it was really nice. The dogs couldn't come with us because they've got a lot of ground nesting birds at the moment, but it was thoroughly enjoyable. We nipped into the local town area. It's in between Midhurst and Petersfield. Midhurst is absolutely stunning. You can see it's got all of the old cobble streets, lots of fantastic shops, plenty of things to see, do and eat. Of course, one of my other favourite things to do we went walking around we came across this beautiful pond that they've got and they had some cute fluffy goslins which was really really sweet to see I do love a fluffy baby animal and then we saw Egyptian geese I've never seen Egyptian geese I've never even knew there were Egyptian geese at the place where we were staying they had all of the rhododendrons coming out they are one of my favorite flowers and absolutely stunning I went and got my nails done in the same color as some of the rhododendrons which is now clashing with my eyeshadow but I don't care. It's summer. It's time to break out the colours, she says, sitting there in a black top. <laughs> but anyway, so speaking of colours and flowers, we had the Chelsea Flower Show, which is open every single year. It's open for a week. And normally on the first day, we have all of the royal visitors. Catherine's done a lot working with the Chelsea Flower Show, if you remember the gardens, where she actually helped design a nature garden. And it was beautiful. We had all those wonderful images of their children, which were known as the Cambridge children where we saw them playing on swings and just sitting there looking all cute and adorable dangling their feet over the stream. Catherine, who was looking absolutely beautiful in a pink shirt dress, was there to surprise the school children who were there for the big bug hunt. Encouraging children into the great outdoors and nature is something that Catherine passionately promotes as part of her healthy and happy childhood initiatives. As you can tell, obviously starting off the video talking about camping trips, I love bugs, I love nature, and I think it's so important to get children involved in things like this at a young age. Bugs are unfortunately under attack because of people using pesticides. There seems to be this thing where everyone needs to have a perfect, immaculate garden and perfect flowers, and they're using poisons and chemicals, and they're getting rid of hedgerow, so it's damaging and it's actually killing off hedgehogs, bees, butterflies. So this is, again, I think it's very important teaching the children that the bugs actually have a really important job to do. Catherine also made an appearance in another news story in a beekeeping outfit because Catherine has decided to share with the world that she actually has a secret hobby of beekeeping. I did have my suspicions before because she's often spoken fondly about bees and she was at another garden show. She was getting children to try honey and explaining it to them. Bees, I love bees. Everyone who knows me knows I'm obsessed with bees, but they do such a wonderful job. And that's not just to sweeten our teas and coffees. So Catherine spent quite a lot of time with the various different schools that were there and chatted and joked around with the children. She actually got involved with the children where they were making lots of pictures. Now, whilst Catherine was completely happy to be quizzed, there was lots of questions of like, are you a real princess? What's it like to be a princess? Which I thought was very sweet. But one little girl had actually asked for Catherine to sign the picture that she had drawn. Catherine sadly had to decline because it's not something that they are allowed to do. Now, naturally, Actually, the usual suspects jumped straight on it and were like, oh, you know, taking a cheap pot shot at the princess by saying, oh, she turned down a child. What a cruel person she is because she didn't put her signature on it. The royal members of the royal family cannot sign autographs. They cannot just sign willy nilly documents and things because of forgery, the risk of people taking their signatures. But what Catherine did was actually something a bit more special, which the little girl can keep. And Catherine said, I may not be able to do my signature, but I can draw. And she actually drew a little flower on the girl's picture, which made for a lot nicer a keepsake than just a signature. Now I say cheap pot shots being thrown at Catherine, there have been a few going on recently. 
First of all, we have got the live action remake of The Little Mermaid. I really wish Disney would stop doing it. I love the original Disney films. I love all of the cartoons. I grew up on them. And to be honest with you, Sunday, when I'm feeling a bit lazy, I love actually clicking on a Disney film. It's, it's a happy place. It's an innocent place to be. Well, it used to be. In the live action remake, there is a scene in the film where Ariel, she has lost her voice due to the sea witch, and Eric is trying to guess her name. He says to her, Diane, Diana. She's like, no. Then he says, Catherine. She pulls her face, screws her face up like, Bleh. yuck, no. And then he says, oh, definitely not Catherine then. Now, the reason why people have kicked up about this, obviously the Little Mermaid was brought up because Megan, if you remember on Oprah, she had her voice stolen like Ariel did. And if anything, as everyone knows, Megan has never <laughs> had her voice stolen by anyone. But for the fact that they've done a swipe at Catherine in here, I just think it was a real nasty cheap shot. It if anything, Catherine is an inspiration for a real princess for little girls to look up to. She wasn't royal. She didn't come from higher society. She fell in love when she was a teenager and she is happily married to her husband and they've got three beautiful children. They are living the real fairy tale story. So I think that was a very bad move by Disney. I also think it's sad because the lead actress who plays Ariel, she's already come under enough scrutiny because some people can't let their brains go over the fact that she's a black actress playing Ariel and people have been attacking her on social media, which I find absolutely disgusting. Halle Bailey actually performed at the Boston Earthshot Prize. So it's such a shame that Disney felt the need to do this completely unnecessary swipe. It's caused controversy for their main star of the film, as well as Catherine. In another completely unnecessary, and I would say rather than cheap, vulgar swipe at uh, The Princess of Wales, Priyanka Chopra, one of Meghan's friends, she's in a TV show called Citadel. And there is a scene in it and I will share it with you sorry for some of you if it offends you but at the end of the day it shouldn't have been done I do think it's completely unnecessary as well they are having a discussion about a man that has to go on a mission he has to complete something and he's basically saying that this mission is as hard as trying to get in between the legs of the Duchess of Cambridge now the fact that they went that far it was quite specific it was obviously aimed at Catherine and I just think absolutely vile and it just comes as no great surprise that Priyanka is friends with Meghan. She actually in 2021 shunned Prince William and Catherine when they entered the royal box in Wimbledon. She was seen multiple times when everyone was clapping and just acknowledging the fact that they came in there. It's the royal box. They were the royals. She was adjusting her scarf. She'd look away. But she did manage to uh, sneak on over to where Catherine and William and the paparazzi were later on to get a few selfies with her in the background. So it's a little bit, I can't help but think it was deliberately put into the show. I don't know how much Priyanka has had a say so over that, but it's just too connected to Megan for it not to have been done on purpose. Now, news has come out that Meghan is up again for another award, which she will be collecting. The only thing that Meghan should be collecting awards for is for collecting awards. She hasn't actually achieved anything. In fact, everything that Archwell have put their name to, that's the point. They've put their name, like Meghan did the foreword on that book by the Grenfell Tower victims that did the big cookery kitchen. Meghan didn't even so much as add a recipe of her own into that. When we read their statement before. It's other people that have done the work. It's other charities that have done it. Even the playground in Uvalde, they join that afterwards. But here is Megan collecting awards for humanitarianism. This one is for a woman's voice in media or something along those lines. And let's be honest, she's had guests on her podcast that were already famous that have achieved things. But Megan, in her own right, the only thing that she achieved was marrying into the royal family and doing a smash and grab job. Now, given the amount of lies that Meghan has told to um, to everyone really, to the media, to, to a judge in a court case, to the royal family, to her family, to absolutely everyone, even on Oprah, the amount of lies that she's been called out for. When she went up on stage to collect her most recent award from the Miz Foundation, she climbed the staircase in her gold dress and her gold shoes, matching the background, matching her bodyguard's tie, and that's a different story altogether. And she was serenaded by the Alicia Keys song, This Girl Is On Fire. 
I think the only thing that's on fire with Megan is probably her knickers from the amount of lies that she tells. Liar, liar, pants are indeed on fire. And there has been more footage that has come out to throw Megan and Harry under the bus. A German news report has released footage which came from the car chase in New York that was not actually a car chase. And it's actually the police officers talking to Megan and Harry's security detail because they had illegally shut off a road. They parked their car behind presumably the taxi. This is where we've seen it from different angles. They've blocked off the road so people couldn't drive up behind them. Now questions that have come to light since my last video is if they were escaping the paparazzi and that's the reasons why they got into a taxi so they could you know well one of many millions of taxis in New York then why did they continue to have their motorcade follow them? I mean all that now becomes is two great big SUVs at the front, two SUVs behind them and a little yellow taxi in the middle. They might as well have had a big neon sign saying, Woo, yes, this one over here, Kui. You know, it doesn't make sense, nor does it make sense, I mean, in any way, shape or form, that this entire evening panned out. Marcus Anderson was there. Marcus Anderson's friendly with Doria. Why didn't Harry and Meghan put their mother or her mother into a separate vehicle so she could go off one way, they could go off another? Where was Marcus Anderson in all of this? Was he, you know, up sipping a cup of tea or filming out of the back of one of the SUVs? Either way, it's all beginning to look like that the only people that were driving and doing illegal things were actually Harry and Meghan's security detail, not the paparazzi. Not a single member of paparazzi got questioned, nor did they get in trouble. It's only Harry and Meghan's team that did. I mean, how did they think that anyone was going to fall for this when given you've got an AA lister like Taylor Swift who was photographed and filmed leaving a studio the very same night in New York, getting straight into the car with her boyfriend, normal dress down security, a fairly normal one singular looking security vehicle. They haven't closed off the pavements. Fans were just allowed to line up. And then of course, at the beginning of May, you had the Met Gala, where you had superstars from all around the world. They managed to coordinate that number of superstars with police, and not a single story came out of any of those celebrities and superstars running into the same problems with the paparazzi. Isn't that a little bit convenient that it always just seems to happen to just Harry and Meghan? I can't help but feel my gut feeling is telling me that they deliberately got into the taxi so they could have their security SUVs drive like absolute morons behind them and then they could film that and pretend that was them being tailed. If you remember the fallout from the Netflix documentary, when Harry and Meghan were looking over their shoulders in LA traffic, they had no one behind them. So perhaps they decided, oh, we better get some more actual footage of vehicles actually chasing us this time. I know that sounds cynical, but I just do not trust these people anymore. They've absolutely got no credibility left. And as I said, with now dash cam, body cam footage that's all coming out, it's going to get a lot worse for the couple. Now, taking all of the seriousness of the fact that they were illegally blocking streets, potentially endangering people's lives, holding up police cars from actually being able to attend other calls, something incredibly funny happened. And that was back grid fought back. Honestly, this is an absolute savage takedown. Harry and Meghan made demands to Backgrid through their legal team and they demanded that all photographs and footage be handed over immediately from that night, presumably because they wanted to hide the photographs and footage of Meghan grinning like a Cheshire cat in the back of the taxi and not actually playing along and remembering she's supposed to be frightened. The letter read, we hereby demand that Backgrid immediately provide us with copies of all photographs, videos and or films taken last night by the freelance photographers after the couple left their event and over the next few hours. Obviously, it comes as no great shock. Harry and Meghan making demands. Harry and Meghan, you know, threatening to uh, get lawyers involved, firing off legal letters. But what did come as a surprise was Backgrid's response. In America, as I'm sure you know, property belongs to the owner of it. Third parties cannot just demand it be given to them, as perhaps kings can do. Perhaps you should sit with your client and advise them that his English rules of royal prerogative to demand that the citizenry hand over their property to the crown were rejected by this country long ago. We stand by our forefathers. Mike, 
drop. Ouch! Absolutely savage. On top of that, the view, which lots of people have a very negative opinion about, Whoopi Goldberg has actually decided that she thinks that the story is bollocks. And not in so many words, but she said a car chase going through Manhattan. If that were actually possible for people to get up to high speed chases, no one would be late for the theatre. Not only has Whoopi called them out, TMZ has called them out. In fact, news channels, magazines, TV actresses, online media personalities, other YouTubers, famous people have all said that they believe it to be utter bollocks. Now, it doesn't really look good for Harry and Meghan when people actually side with a Hollywood celebrity paparazzi agency over their version of events. They thought South Park was bad. It looks like this one is going to blow up in their face even bigger. It seems that New York, New Yorkers and the media outlets are not so willing to stay quiet or cover up, which is looking more and more like a publicity stunt. Harry has no clout or sway in the USA and it's really beginning to show. In another news story that came out, Harry and Meghan reportedly demanded a free stay at the Carlisle Hotel. Yes, a super exclusive Carlisle Hotel, one of Princess Diana. Diana's favourites. They wanted a freebie or they said a heavily discounted room and they were politely told no. Now another YouTuber, Megan Smoll, she actually put in her last video that she thinks she knows why. She's got a contact in New York and it is rumoured that Harry and Meghan when they were last there actually took these photographs themselves inside the venue. Now the Carlisle Hotel has lots of, you know, top high profile clients where a lot of them want privacy, they want security. So it's actually damaging to the hotel to have these type of photographs leaked because it shows that they allow paparazzi to get that close to the clients. Harry and Meghan yet again burning more bridges wherever they go. Now on the 19th of May it was actually Harry and Meghan's fifth wedding anniversary and rather than you know cutesy stories coming out the Telegraph Camilla Tomney she broke a story that Harry is in fact sleeping regularly at a hotel. In fact Harry stays so regularly that the local hotel owner has reserved a room for him. That's not someone that's just sleeping there on, on the odd occasion. Not only that, other newspapers came out and said that he's also been sleeping at the San Vicente bungalows, which we saw them do a paparazzi stunt also at that venue as well. It makes you wonder if Meghan actually arrived to show that they were still together after the fallout of Frogmore and Harry just got out of his bungalow out the back, walked down, jumped into the car and that's when they drove round into the, into the entrance. Further down in the story, it said this is quite normal for a couple that have been married for five years. I can assure you, I got married two months before Harry and Meghan did and uh, it is not normal. There is definitely problems. There is definitely reasons which we are not privy to while Harry is sleeping in completely different houses to that of his wife and his two young children. Some have said it's Harry's safe space so he doesn't get frazzled. What sort of mature man has two children with a woman and then decides, hang on a minute, I can't handle this, I'm getting frazzled, I need to go stay at a hotel again. Whenever we've seen Harry and Meghan, they're never ever with their children. So obviously someone takes care of them. They've said that Doria lives there and she babysits. I'm convinced that Marcus Anderson lives with them. But it does make you wonder, for what reasons would Harry be wanting to sleep somewhere else unless the rumours are true that they have indeed broken up and they are just trying to save face? Now, I can't say <laughs> that I'm shocked or surprised. But the fact that this has come out, these are people talking in America. These are the hotel apparently confirmed it, a hotel source to say that this was actually true. But it's going to start dawning on him that he had a lot more protection and a lot more privacy in the UK. The paparazzi and the media companies in the UK had very strict rules when it came to the royal family. The fact that Meghan packed her husband off to celebrity paparazzi central, Harry is slowly, because let's be honest, he's not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed, he's slowly going to learn that he had a lot more privacy, a lot more protection, and he was a lot safer in the UK than what he is out in the USA. He also had someone that was always available to clean up his messes.
And that's going to be the biggest problem for Harry. He's got no one there to hold his hand and to pick up after him. Harry, in this moment when this photograph was released, he looks genuinely stressed and upset. His reaction might actually be genuine. He wasn't in on the plot for this absolutely awful stunt that I am calling it a stunt because I believe it to be one. I think that Harry is genuinely shocked in the moment and Doria is on her phone looking like she is bored playing some Candy Crush. She's not even remotely perplexed. And Megan is sitting there like a smiling assassin with Jupiter's delight all across her face. She's not even remotely concerned or holding her husband's hand, who is, however, upset in the moment. Harry and Meghan have lost all credibility. No one believes them, no one trusts them, and New Yorkers are quite rightly angry. They are angry that they had street closures. They are angry that two police cars quite clearly were trying to get through to another call, and they had to wait until Harry and Meghan had cleared the street and their security vehicles had moved out of the way. Not only that, the mayor has looked in to this. Police are wasting police time looking into footage, which, as it turns out, I think has all been done to create drama and no doubt footage for Netflix or for Harry's court cases. Americans are angry. They are becoming angrier by the day that they've got such an imported weasel that's come over from the UK that is testing their patience by getting involved with their politics with no idea what he's talking about. He's already upset them with the amendments and now doing such a stunt like this. But I actually find it funny because I think Harry is going to be learning the most valuable lesson of his life and he's going to get schooled by Americans. And that is, and I will quote, you can fool all of the people some of the time and some of the people all of the time, but you cannot fool all of the people all of the time. And it seems that New Yorkers are definitely not being fooled by Harry and Meghan either. So that's it for me, guys, on this video. I will be back very soon where we will be finally talking about the other royals and the things that they've been up to. So take care for now and I'll see you soon. Bye.